Hi everyone, it's Thursday night. It's time to learn something different. And what are we going to do tonight? Well, tonight we're going to talk about the embellishing machine, also known as a felting machine. And what is felting? Well, if you've ever had this really wonderful wool skirt that was a size 9 or 11 or even 14 or even 20 and you put it in the and your husband or kids put it in the washer in the dryer hot water and it came out to be kind of thick and a size 0 when you're done that's needle felting and what needle felting is is it takes the wool fibers or any kind of natural fiber it's mostly wool that when you think of felting uh, that it's done with the wool fibers and the wool fibers are like a spiral if you look really close the little hairs on a little little sheep they're little spirals and so therefore when they're washed and manipulated they twist together and they get really tight and they you can form new things um, traditionally sometimes you'll see people will will uh, knit a scarf or a hat or something way too big and then you wash it in warm water and sort of manipulate it it sort of felts it you can no longer see where the yarns are uh, there's lots of examples on the internet so um, other things you've seen as you've seen needle felting and needle felting is they'll see those 3d animals that they're cute little animals to take wool roving or whatever and they make animals out of it or or any kind of shape fruit I've seen all kinds of things made out of well if that's what you're wanting to do you're gonna to have to do that by hand otherwise what needle felting does is it takes one fiber next to another and it will use a bird needle okay it's hard to see this but there's little tiny burrs at the edges of this needle and you can really feel it when you try to penetrate it through something else it really sticks it sounds like it seems like it's the worst sewing machine needle you've ever used in your life but with the hand needle felting they usually have like a, a block of almost looks like a scrub brush and then you put the wool on top of it and then you sit there and do this and they usually have one or two needles or th I think I, up to seven and what it does is it keeps going keeps going till it puts it together well you can do that it'll take you forever that's why they have these wonderful needle mach felting machines um, this one is the embellisher by baby lock the only thing is now it is a discontinued machine however sometimes you can find them on the internet uh, or eBay or someplace like that Craigslist and if you can find one at a reasonable price because I think when these things came out they were like seven hundred dollars they were very expensive but you can get them used and I would pick them up They're they're virtually indestructible you can't hurt these things um, they made this this was made in two two versions there was one with seven needles and there was one with 12 needles um, there's a few people I think it's um, Janome and Singer both have a needle felting machine I'm not sure if they're still in production or not but if you can get a hold of one that's great brother makes an attachment that goes on their I think XL series of machines that is an attachment to your machine that you can use it can't use that with every brother machine but you can with some uh, contact your your local brother dealer and they'd be happy to f help you find it how does this work well this one right now has seven needles in it and they're all this bird needle that's what you're, you're using I'll put that away you don't want to lose these needles they're rather expensive to replace but you know they last forever <laughs> you can't dull them they'll just felt better right so what what you'll notice immediately there's no bobbin <laughs> no bobbin case what this is for is it's to collect the dust because these are venti very very linty machines and they do collect a lot of dust so they have this here in order to to collect the dust and of course it comes with the various tools and if we have time we will I'll show you how to um, change the needles in this machine because it's not intuitive needle felting is used a lot in art quilts they there's lots of really nice three-dimensional art quilts they look very fuzzy 
They're very nice. They do wonderful seascapes. If you look on the internet, there's lots of examples of where the, just look up needle felting machine on YouTube. You'll see lots and lots of videos. Okay, so what this excels in is working with natural fibers. Doesn't work well with polyesters. I'm not an art quilter, not in, by any means. I'm a very traditional quilter. However, I do have a practical use for this machine, that I, which is actually the reason I bought it. Because if you ever made a quilt, say you bought your quilt, quilt uh, batting, say 90 by 110 inches, and you've made 110 inches by 110 inch square quilt, uh-oh, so you don't have batting for a good part of it. What you can, and you would have to splice it. And what you would do is you'd put the two pieces together and you zigzag them together. Well, it would make a nice lump in there and you could feel it. Unless you've got this, this batting spliced together in a part that's not going to be, you know, felt like underneath of a seam. Well, then you would, you would feel it. But what actually needle felting, felting, which is the same with, this is called needle felting. This is actually how batting is, is, a lot of times cotton batting is made, that they will take something called scrim, which is like a super light interfacing, and they needle felt the, the cotton fibers on top of it. So if that's how they made it, well, guess what? I can splice my stuff together. Okay, now when you're using this, it does have a take-up lever, you go up or down, you can take... You can take the needle bar and move it up and down. You want the height of this to be just above, and you can raise this, raise this up and lower it. Let me see if you can see. I'm putting one layer on top of the other, okay, and just fitting it up underneath, and I'm just hitting the pedal. And it's a little too high. I want to come down lower. Why you don't want it too high is if this little guard, which helps guide the needles in and out, is too high, then what happens is it can these needles can see how easily they bend, they can deflect, and they end up breaking a needle. If you have it too low, you can't move the fabric underneath of the needle. So you want to get it at just the right spot. And mine, is, mine does need servicing because it's a little on the slow side. It'll speed up as I work with it today. Oh, it's speeding up. And then as I go back and forth, I'm actually felting two parts together. There we go, it's picking up speed, yay. spots here. So you can do it from both sides. See how this is nice and flat? This actually works very well. And now when you put your quilt sandwich together, you cannot feel that lump in the middle because it's all felted together and it's nice and flat. I'll show you the part, this part here. It's not curled. See, it's nice and flat. This is primarily what I use this machine for. However, I did come up with some other, uh, you know, I found out some other uses. It's good for embellishing things. Like I said, it likes natural fibers. You can, and we'll show how we handle different different fibers and things on different backgrounds. So, what everybody thinks of as the traditional that, uh, traditional embellishing is that you take this stuff, which is called wool roving, and you can get it at Michaels, or, or you can get this anywhere, pretty much. Joanne, I think I've even seen it at Walmart, and I'm just going to pull off a bunch. And now, I don't want that done. 
You can have it as thin or as thick as you like. I want it a little thicker than that. And I'm just going to felt it. I'll do a little felting here rather quickly. And then as I go, I'll do more and more and more. see it's felted on the back here where I hardly felt it at all will it come up <laughs> no it's hard to get it up this little bit that I just passed it one time was could go more the more you felt it uh, felt it the more it comes through on the back this is pretty secure you can wash it and it's not going to come up this is a great way to uh, fix jeans say jeans get a hole in it Let's just simulate a hole. Okay, I have a hole in my jeans. And I want to cover it. But say I want to just, well, I could just take, make a flower or something. Take a piece of felt. A uh, wool felt is going to work the best, however. We'll pretend this is a flower. I'm not real good at cutting out flowers. I'm just free-forming this. Okay, we're pretending that's a flower. Okay. Well, now, and if I still feel a hole, I can always put a patch piece in the back. Let's just take a little square and patch it underneath. So I'm, I'm covering the hole. And... Alrighty, and now I'm just going to felt it. Now, right now I'm using all seven needles, but you don't have to. You can use even as little as one. And look, it felt it all the way through. So now this is, you know, I could trim that. And now I would have a nice mend. Can't see the hole at all. It's good and strong. I could even put a little, little piece of soap. Well, it's going to have a red center. See so a little red circle in the middle. The more you felt it, the more secure it is. Okay. And so now, here I, I have fixed this pair of jeans with this little flower. Yes, it's crude. And you know, and you know what? There's nothing in the back here. I just trim this. And this there would be no extra bulkiness in the back, or just a little bit. But it's better than having thread, because if this were say on your thigh or on your arm or something, that could get irritated if this is thread because thread's kind of scratchy. Well, this is more comfortable and it looks really cute. So, uh, here's another way to fix them. Okay, here's something cute. I could fix them or fix this to a little silk flower. Okay, and I will put a little piece of yellow on here. A little yellow felt circle. So you'll find yourself not even throwing away little bits of felt. <laughs> It'll keep it all. Okay, and then let's see, do I have any leaves? Yes, I have. See, here's some leaves. And there, see, it has the one you're doing with silk flowers, it has the leaf. You have to take the leaf off of the plastic. So you just tear it off, leave this behind, and then I can just this up under here and I'll probably do some in the leaf just to hold it
See, and at this point, I could even remove, see, I have, I have all seven needles in there. I could remove maybe, just leave two. And so now I've got a new way to, but this is great for putting on tote bags and purses and hats and all kinds of stuff. This is perfectly washable. And this is just from a, silk, a piece of silk flower that I had. Other things you can do is you can use, if you have any of these fancy little threads, I've got a whole bunch of these little things. I'm just going to put a bunch here. Well, let's just see. I'm going to... Where's the two ends? Here we go. Okay. Let's go closer. You could even take rickrack and see it's on there pretty securely. Although this one, I am managing to pull it off. Okay, that would require, um, I'm not sure what this is made out of. This might be polyester. If it's polyester, it doesn't like to felt. Works better with, uh, say, yarn. Okay, I'm just going to, I'll do two layers as if I was going to get it started. Let's see what happens if I get fancy here. I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just making stuff up. <laughs> That's enough. See, now I've got an interesting pattern. And now if at the very end I felt this for a little, quite a little bit, it's not going to pull off. Let me try putting that back on and felting it some more than what I was doing. The more you felt it, the more secure it, the object is aff affixed to it. There. Yeah, that's, that's affixed really tight. I can't pull it off. Here's something else I like to do. This is great on jeans as well. Again, if you've got a hole or something, this helps to disguise it, is that you can take a piece of lace and then I'll felt it. It may distort a little, so you always do the outlines first. Or actually do it in sort of all direction. And here I'm just securing it as best I can. Now I'll go in and felt it harder. Okay, see, I mean, it's hard to see. It did felt through. Not much. And this is a nylon lace, and I'm still, well, that's where I can grab it, and it's not coming up. I need to felt that. You need to felt your ends down. But this is a great way, great way to add lace to a, to a pair of jeans or to a purse or a notebook or cover, all kinds of stuff. This, I know, does not work. Okay? <laughs> This is Angelina fibers right here. These are Angelina fibers, and I really like them. And you will see these will not stick. I'll just put a few of them in here. Crunch them up, put them in here. Yeah, nothing. It is not sticking no matter how long I stay on there. 
could I get this to work? Well, let's see if you add, one thing I like to use is bridal tooling for a couple of reasons. And sometimes these will, let's see, let's put this in on top. Let's see if it'll, it'll felt it down. Nope, it's not even sticking down with that. Needs the nylon. Okay. Sometimes you just want to bling things up. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the roving. Yeah, see, it didn't stick, and then even the nylon came off. But if you want it to put a little bling in there, you can add these. Come up, and me add some more. Just a few of these little fibers and put a little tiny layer of the wool roving over top. And put something really sheer. Silk organza will feel, uh, felt nicely. So, like I said, it's a natural fiber and it should work fine. So yeah, see now, now that little bit of bling is locked underneath of the wool roving. So you have to felt something that will stick to that bottom layer. You can't use nylon, polyester, metallic threads. Um, I can use other threads. Like this is a rayon thread. Or, so. so this is uh, actually designed for a serger. I'll just pull a bunch of it in here. Let's see if it sticks. Oop, needle's down. Okay, now it changes the whole shape of that. It literally tore these rayon fibers apart. <laughs> so now it looks totally different. That could be a fish and see that felted through. You will know that it will work if you see it on the back. Now, how does this stuff work with cotton? Let's take a look at some cotton and let's add a little piece of roving. Let's see how the cotton works. Okay, here's a piece of cotton. Yep, it worked. Now, when you use cotton, it has a tendency to distort, to, to uh, pucker the fabric a little bit, but it will, fe things felt nicely to cotton, so you can use cotton. It also works really well on linen. This, this is a piece of linen, and it does work well with the linen. A lot of people say that you have to use the wool felt rather than the acrylic felt, and I actually found no difference on how well it stuck and how well it didn't stick. Stuck just as well to either fiber. So I actually have a practical uh, project. And we're going to make a coaster out of this. This is a good holiday project. And I'm just going to make something up here. So, so um, let's see, I have some brown. Okay, so I want to cut this in half. Okay, because I want to Make a stem and a flower. Okay, I want my flower sort of here. So I'm going to put my, I'm going to put my stem in, the big stem first. I'll put this this way. So I just tack it first and then come in and felt it longer. See, I don't have to use pins. I don't have to baste anything. And I'm going to make, um, let's see, I want to put some leaves maybe here. There. Okay, here's my stem. 
I'll put my leaves in. Let's see, I got a couple leaves. Um, put one down here. Okay, and 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 I'm just going to attach the leaves. I'm just attaching them at the base because what I can do is remove some of these needles and come back and just stitch the vein up through the middle and tack it down. Just going to do that for now. Okay, and now I'm going to put in the flower. I have red flower petals. Let's see, I'm going to make a daisy, I think. Let me just put them in a pleasing way, sort of. Okay, that looks good. I'm just going to come in here. I want to felt that in pretty good because I don't want them to fall out. Oop, I have a gap here, so I'm going <laughs> to seal it. I, I had a gap where I saw the right in here where I could see the burlap because I didn't make it quite reach, so I just filled it in a little. So, see, these are good and tight. And then that's about right. And then I'm going to put this the middle on it. I'm going to make it really rough around the edges because I want it to those fibers to separate. Okay, cool. All righty. And that's pretty much done. I want to show you how you can actually make your own fabric. You can take a piece of bridal tool. And remember I said you couldn't stitch through it? Well, you can, you can attach like roving to it. So I'm going to take little bits of roving. I'm going to start out thin. I'd rather start out thin and then go bigger. You can also use this machine to distress uh, fibers. So if you've got a, a silky scarf that you want it to look all wrinkled and whatnot, you can do that. I've never been a big fan of that. Okay, so I have this piece. It's not well stuck. It will come off because it is just wool roving going through some nylon tooling. So I'm going to grab another piece and another color. And I'm just going to put it on the back. Now I'm going to take some of this and I would probably use a brown let's pretend that's brown or green dark green I know that doesn't look like much does it and you can make it as thick well notice you've got like a flatter side but notice how that orange goes through on the back but just say I went ahead and I'll now felt it from this side so it'll flatten it out a little more I could add other colors so guess what I have here a nice piece of felt that I can use as a leaf to attach to something else. So look, I've made another 
another piece of it. Yeah, I know this isn't really pretty colors, but you get the idea that you can make your own pieces and decorate them. So now you have no stitching going through. So this could be a leaf that could go on something and let's just put it over here. And I will stick it over here. I'll pull that back, felt it into place. I now have something totally unique and individual that no one else on earth will have. It said I'm not an artsy person, so therefore I'm not real good at this freelance stuff. But this is a great way to use up scraps of stuff. Okay, now I will come back and we will, I'll take out some of these needles. Okay, to change the needles, the needles till they're at their highest position, you're going to turn this this presser foot height, or actually it's not presser foot, it's just arranging the height of this, of the, uh, the guide. You want that guide all the way down. Keep turning it until it is as low as it will go. Okay, it won't go any lower. Okay, then you're going to loosen the needle clamp thing, which is, um, Okay, notice, it's hard to see, right here, there is, there is that one and there is that one. Keep note of that one because you're going to need to line those two up later. Okay, so I'm going to first, it comes with two Allen wrenches. So I'm going to take the bigger one, which is this one, and unscrew it. Okay, and it comes out comes out fairly easily. Now I want to remove some of these needles. So I just take the smaller of the Allen wrench thing and let's see, I think I'm going to leave maybe three needles in. I'm going to take the ones out on the edges. So here I'm just going to turn this and remove the needle. And tighten it back up. Okay, and then take this one out. I'm going to take four needles out because I just want the three in the middle because I want to be able to create a straight line. Tighten it up. So I'll leave those. Mm, this one's tight. <laughs> oh, there we go. I have to tighten it right away because then if I forget it, there goes the screw. All of the good news is that if you do lose the screw, they're the same screws for the sergers. So you can, the eight thread sergers, you can use the same needles. These needles are at different heights. They're supposed to be. Okay. The one in the center fits in the longest way. Okay, now you've got to find that place with the little hole here. I'm going to line these needles up, put them in here, go straight up. It won't go anywhere else. Now, before you tighten it, I want to put your needles down to make sure that you have them in the center of the holes. And I'm having to just look. I'm sorry I'm in the way, but but see now, I'm all the way in there, so that's good. So now I'm going to take this larger Allen wrench and tighten. Oops. Well, before I tighten too much, I'm going to check it again. Oh, I missed. <laughs> I didn't get it in there. Okay, let me do that again. I didn't push it all the way up. There's a little... It's hard to see, but at the very top of the needle bar is a little hole that's red. And this has to fit right in there. Is that straight? There we go. Because if you don't get it tight enough, that's going to come off and it will instantly break all your needles. Okay, bring that back up. I'm going to go real slow. Hey, got it. Okay. 
I'm happy. Uh, you might get a little help trying to get that put on there rather tightly. You have, say here's, your, here's the shaft that you're putting this on. There's one part where that neat, little red hole is that's right here. When you screw it in, you have to make sure there's a flat spot. So what it does is it screws into the flat and therefore it will not shift on you. And, well, here, let's start with this one. I wanted to put a line down the middle here and go up higher. Okay. That's good. I like that. See that felted it down the middle so it secured the leaf a little better. On these, I want to do the same thing to these leaves. So I'm going to come down the center. I could have left just one needle in, but then I would have to spend longer felting it. This time I'm doing it, doing three at a time, so it goes a little faster than just one. I'm going to go here to the flat. So I'm going to put it this way because I want it to sort of, and then I can turn it on its side, make it deeper. Okay, come over here. See how it put the three lines down where I went straight? Here's where I was going, it gave it a different look here because I used the blade, the uh, needles going this way and these, they were all in on the line. Okay, again, I'm gonna put little veins. got them all. Okay, so what I can do here is just, I'll cut off this salvage. Cut these a little closer. And pull off the extra pieces. Now I've got fringe. I could have even outlined some of this with a little bit of wick rack or some fancy thread to secure those fibers. There, all done. And see, now we have a really cute little, little coaster or table decoration that was done rather quickly and it gave your machine a practice on how to, how to use the embellisher. Okay, now here's how we put the needles back in. So again, I'm going to push I'm going to turn this knob all the way down until it doesn't go any further, okay? I'm going to take the cassette out, which is the top, okay? And my needle is all the way to the top. But to put the needles back in, or if you broke a needle, you rarely will break the center needle. They're not the same. All these needles are in different positions. Okay, so I'm going to loosen this, not all the way out, but a good way. Put this. It's very small, and this is where this tool helps. Push it down as far as it will go, and tighten it back up. Okay. 
two. You also really don't want to touch these because you can cut your, you know, scrape your hands. And these things hurt. Ask me how I know. And one more. go get them in good and tight you don't want these things to fall out okay we have the set screw here I'm going to fit these inside the hole which is a little, sometimes a little harder to, to than you think there we go that will be all the way up there we go okay now I'm going to Loosen this, line it up with that red hole, and you can't, I, it's really hard to see, but it's right above is a little red hole, and then you tighten it with both hands, hand walk that down, there, that should work, let's give it a try, Look, raise the cloth holder bar, I'm going really slow. Okay, good to go. And that's how you replace the needles in this machine. It's easy to do. So, I'm, this is all I have for you guys for tonight. So I actually did not have time to do my hair at all because I have been a little under the weather for the last few days. So I'm not going to show my my tired looking horrible face today so but until next time if you have any questions send me an email at waltzquilt at yahoo.com or if you have any comments you know I, I i'm open to all of it um be sure to like subscribe and hit the notification bell and you can share this video and until next week thank you so much for watching and have a great weekend talk to you later Bye.